So what has been the impact of these cuts? First and foremost, they've created mass confusion on the front lines, both on the part of healthcare providers and on the part of refugees themselves. Many bona fide refugees are not seeking health care because they are simply confused of what is available to them. Many refugees think they have to pay for their visit, and in fact, most are expected to pay up front now, which is quite egregious. Many doctors and hospital administrators are unclear of which class of refugee is entitled to what benefit under the new grid, uh, which is administered by Blue Cross. In fact, Blue Cross doesn't know many times when you call them. So what ends up happening with doctors, walk-in clinics, is they simply do the simple thing. They just turn them away. I think it's important to really highlight the situation for the designated country of origin refugee. These folks will not have any health care at all, as I said, unless their condition is deemed a risk to public safety or public health. A risk to public health means, essentially, that they have a communicable disease. Not just any communicable disease, though. It has to be on this list. These are reportable lists, and basically, I'm not sure how many times we see smallpox anymore, or um, leprosy, and all these other things that are on this reportable list here in Canada. But essentially, if they have something like pneumonia, if they have any other chronic disease, there is no medication for these individuals. As far as public security, what that means is if a patient, say from Mexico, from a designated country of origin, comes to the emergency room and they're suicidal, they will receive no health care, no medication, no psychotherapy. If on the other hand they're homicidal, so they're a risk to us, they'll get all the treatment that they need.